So, despite the fact that we've had three prime ministers, constant changing of chances of the exchequer, even three different transport secretaries, there has been one consistent that this Conservative government has been on since it came to power, going back almost 13 years, and that is the constant attack on public transport. Despite the fact that Shockingly, you'd think they'd be massively in favour of public transport. Of course, the biggest users of uh, public transport are, are OAPs. And of course, they are the perfect demographic for the Conservatives to, to try and attract. But consistently, they have been going on the offensive. Most of the uh, offensive they've been really taking, of course, have been in local councils. They've gone, oh, this is just austerity. But then local councils who very often are the ones that end up footing the bill for, for the pensioners to, to be able to have all that free travel that they have access to, which, again, they should have access to, or else it, it, it ends up cutting them off from all kinds of, of, of services and activities and, and stuff that you know they can do. And it's not just uh, OAPs that end up uh, suffering this as well. It's disabled people too. And unfortunately, with the announcement yesterday that over a thousand ticket offices are set to close, not only is this going to lead to a, a, a loads of job losses, because don't believe the hype that the these these the rail operators come out and said, "Oh, don't worry, we're not going to you know uh, lose anyone. They'll be transferred to to different jobs." Yeah, now they will, but eventually they won't be. And of course, it's then, who do they come after next? First of all, it's the ticket officers. Then they start to cut the cleaning staff at the at these centres. And then eventually they'll come after people on the trains. We've already seen moves several, several times, which so far has been resisted to get rid of conductors on trains. So that is something else that will, sooner or later, if they have a, a successful run at it, those could very well disappear as well. So before we go talking more about this and of course the potential damages and not only that but the social damages i think this will end up causing um please do remember to click on that like share and subscribe button and like i say please do remember this is a really important issue so please do remember to try and share this so that many people can really understand because i think there's a lot of people out there who just think oh ticket office is closing why should i care um one day you could be in the a situation where you you lose your phone, you maybe lose your, your battery on this, maybe you one day ended up being disabled. Like I say, you never know, you know, touch wood for myself as well. But you, you never know what might happen to you in the future. And very often ticket officers are often the first place that people could or, well, used to be able to turn if they had a problem. Not anymore. So, uh, like I say, please do remember to click on that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are ways to help support the channel with the Patreon page, the one-off donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can buy me coffee. There's the one-off YouTube donation link called the YouTube Thank You button. And of course, there is the Pony Club down below as well. So, ultimately, at the end of the day, I think it's going to be disabled people who really take the brunt of this. It, it really is. And there's this fantastic piece in Tribune. Uh, I definitely recommend you go read it because, um, like I say, I, I follow Gareth Dennis a lot. And Gareth Dennis tweeted out this article saying, you know, how this basically really sums up the, all these problems in one. And I, I fully agree with them. Uh, so the guy who, who wrote this article um, spoke to numerous disabled people, disabled groups, and basically said, as you can see in the title article of one of the people who was speaking to, I don't know how I would cope. If they go, how is someone who is disabled meant to cope? And you can see, obviously, in the picture, there's someone in, in the wheelchair. And one of the things that they talk about in this is that assistants, people who sort of help people uh, like that get into sort of, um, you know, on the train and off a train, you know, pre-phone up the conductor or the train driver to tell them, hey, there's someone disabled getting on your next stop, so you need to get ready for them. That all happens from a ticket office. And... In your larger stations, that's going to be fine. That's going to be kept. But then the problem is, is what if you are a disabled person that doesn't have access to a, a main sort of central station? You know, what if it's a smaller station or 
just a local town station and you no longer have access to that what if you need to get on that train and the conductor misses you or you know all kinds of there's all kinds of stuff that could happen here that could lead to well someone who's disabled basically just being forgotten and this is really um, a case that we should be making this year is that this is a big social issue and it's going to end up with thousands of, of again disabled people oaps basically being socially disconnected and we've seen the impacts of what happens to sort of oaps and people who are disabled when we've seen local bus services be cut off that they no longer have access to easily and available public transport even though very often you will see oh don't worry they, they've still got dial a ride even then it robs them of a, a certain independence that they that they once had and had access to and no longer this you know this this getting rid of, of ticket officers it robs them of that it really does and it is going to become i think a much bigger problem but that's obviously one issue, which I think certainly should be really, really highlighted. But the other issue is eventually these rail operators are going to come after other areas that they can cut on certainly public transport. And uh, you may remember we talked to Gareth Dennis uh, a long time ago, and even he said, it. look, a big problem we have in our railway is that you look at Europe, you look at us, and our whole rail transport system is not really set up for public transportation it's more set up for cargo transportation and whereas europe it's very much a uh, either it's a very sort of public focused or it's a bit of more sort of very much public but also sort of cargo ours is very very much focused on cargo that is why you haven't really seen new lines being built in years because well <laughs> they haven't really had to build any new lines because why would they need to when we've when they've already got the cargo lines operating, that's why I've I, I and others have said when we look at things like HS two, it's a big step forward for public transportation because as we said, this frees up capacity, so this gets the fast trains onto the HS two track. This frees up more capacity for having more local, having more regional trains that you can have on that slower track. And it would be a massive benefit for it. But at the end of the day, this is a sustained assault and an sustained attack on public transport of not just trains, but even buses as well. And it's something that we should absolutely really take to heart and really start to fight for. And I think because we haven't fought for public transport, you've seen buses and even the rail infrastructure go from well just over the past 13 years just go from bad to <laughs> absolutely diabolical um and this is why as I, i've talked about this before but you've seen movements for renationalizing the rail it's on average above about 60 percent that's when you compare it to the rest of when what do you think we should nationalize and it's rail that's winning all the time there's a very clear winner of what we need to do and how we should go about it. And I've said before, we on the left really need to have an actual plan of if we are going to nationalize the railway system, how are we going to do it? How are we going to get there till we have a nationalized system? And then once we have a nationalized system, what's the transport strategy for the UK? How are we going to sort of do that? It's not enough just to say, we're going to nationalize it. You need a strategy of how you're going to achieve that. And then once you've achieved it, what you intend to do and how you intend to run the system. Having a transport strategy is something we don't even have. Even Jeremy Corbyn's plan of to nationalise the rail didn't even get that far because he just said, we're going to nationalise the rail. Okay, then what? <laughs> you know, who's who's going to be in charge of, of, of running it all? What, the, there was many, many questions, unfortunately, Corbyn's plan actually left out. Um, but that's probably a discussion for another time. But hey, um, like I say, eventually, I think this push for renationalizing the railways, I think, is going to gain, I think, even more traction. I think the more we see our our railway system sort of damaged and sort of more torn to shreds, 
I think the more people are going to start really sort of start wanting that more and more. And bear in mind, as we've said, when it is well above 60% of all the things that people want nationalized, and that is only going to grow. I think it's only going to grow more and more and more as time progresses. But I think this is very sad news. I think it's something that we should, uh, on the left and progressives, should fight back and really push back against. And even then, this isn't a, a left-right issue. This is, this is a, as we said, it's, it's a sort of a social issue that's going to affect millions of people up and down the, up and down the country. And they're going to be sort of socially disconnected because of these changes. And as I said, it, it shifts beyond a, a left-right moment in that because, you know, it's going to affect everyone regardless of what where you sit on the political spectrum. So, as always, uh, thank you very much uh, for watching. And, of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.